I came to love my vagina. It's embarrassing because it's not politically correct. I mean, I know it should have happened in a bath with salt grains from the Dead Sea, and no play, me loving my woman self. I know the story. Vaginas are beautiful. Our self-hatred is only from the internalized repression and hatred of the patriarchal culture. <laughs> it isn't real. Pussy that you met. <laughs> I know all of it. Like when we've grown up in a culture where they taught us that fat thighs were beautiful, we'd all be pounding down milkshakes and Krispy Kremes lying on our backs, spending our days thighs expanding. <laughs> but we didn't grow up in that culture. I hated my thighs. And I hated my vagina even more. I thought it was incredibly ugly. I was one of those women who had looked at it, and from that moment on, I wished I hadn't. It made me sick. I pitied anyone who had to go down there. In order to survive, I began to picture there was something else between my legs. I imagined furniture. <laughs> Cozy futons with light cotton comforters, little velvet settees, or leopard rugs, or pretty things like silk handkerchiefs, quilted pot holders, place settings. I grew so accustomed to this that I lost all memory of having a vagina. Whenever a man was inside me, I imagined him in a mink-like muffler or a Chinese bowl. <laughs> then I met Bob. Bob is the most ordinary man I have ever met. <laughs> he is thin and tall and nondescript and wore tan khaki clothes. He did not like spicy foods or listen to friends. He had no interest in sexy lingerie. In the summertime, he stood in the shade. He did not share his inner feelings. He did not have any problems or issues and wasn't even an alcoholic. He wasn't very funny or mysterious or articulate. He wasn't mean or unavailable. He wasn't self-involved or charismatic. He didn't drive very fast. I didn't particularly like Bob. <laughs> I would have missed him altogether if he hadn't picked up the change that I dropped on the deli floor. And when his hand accidentally touched mine, something happened. I went to bed with him. <laughs> That's a miracle. Turns out that Bob loves vaginas. He was a connoisseur. <laughs> he loved the way they felt, the way they tasted, the way they smelled, but most importantly, he loved the way they looked. He had to look at them. The first time we had sex, he said he had to see me. I'm here, I said. <laughs> no, you, he said, I have to see you. Turn on the light, I said, thinking he was a weirdo and freaking out in the dark. <laughs> he turned on the light. Then he said, okay, I'm ready, ready to see you. Right here, I said, I'm right here. Then he began to undress me. What are you doing, Bob? I need to look at it, I said, he said. No need, I said, just do it. I need to see what you look like. But you've seen a red leather couch before. Bob continued. He wouldn't stop. I wanted to throw up and die. This is awfully intimate. I said, can't you just do it? No, he said. It's who you are. I need to look at it. I held my breath. He looked and looked. He got breathy and his face changed. He didn't look ordinary anymore. He looked like a hungry beast. <laughs> you're so beautiful, he said. You're elegant and deep and innocent and wild. You saw that there? It's <laughs> as if he read my palm. I saw that, he said, and more, much, much more. He stayed looking for almost an hour as if he was studying the map observing the moon or staring into my eyes, but it was my vagina. In the light, I watched him looking at me, and he looked so genuinely excited, so peaceful and euphoric. I began to get wet and turned on. I began to see myself the way that he saw me. I began
began to feel beautiful and delicious, like a great painting or a waterfall. Bob wasn't afraid. He wasn't grossed out. I began to swell, began to feel proud, began to love my vagina. And Bob lost himself there in my vagina. And I was there with him. And we were gone.